did you know? Fans predicted the announcement of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver a week before their official reveal. The Japanese TV show Pokemon Sunday teased a big announcement for the following week. Behind the presenters were two confetti-filled balls, one gold and one silver, something viewers quickly picked up on. The precedent set by Fire Red and Leaf Green led many to correctly guess that Gold and Silver would be the next games to be remade. Perhaps because of this, Nintendo decided to reveal Heart Gold and Soul Silver three days early. The development of Heart Gold and Soul Silver was influenced by many of the series' past successes. The original titles were made to be the ultimate Pokemon games, as nobody on the team thought the series would continue after Gold and Silver. They thought the series would decline in popularity based on previous trends. However, the success of Gold and Silver demonstrated the series' staying power, and so producer Sunakazu Ishihara founded the Pokémon Company to manage the series' brand and marketing. Despite their eventual success, the games weren't created without issue. Developing the special Pokémon Blue and Yellow games led to setbacks in production of the original Gold and Silver. To help fill the gap made by these delays, Ishihara approved the release of the Pocket Pikachu, a pedometer with a screen where Pikachu would appear happier the farther the player walked. An enhanced version known as Pocket Pikachu Color Gold and Silver was also released after Gold and Silver. Creatures Inc. were later involved in making the pedometer bundled with the 2008 Nintendo DS game Personal Trainer Walking. Ishihara again was involved in the project, and even used the pedometer in his personal life by attaching it to his dog's collar during walks. One day during a walk, the device fell off, and Ishihara assumed it was lost until he found it a month later in a muddy puddle. He was impressed that the device was still fully functional, and wanted to use it with Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Ishihara's idea would become the Poker Walker, a pedometer bundled with the games that allowed players to walk their Pokémon. Internally, it was considered something of a successor to the Pocket Pikachu. As the Pocket Pikachu Color launched after Gold and Silver, the team wanted to release a similar device alongside the remakes to show how both the tech and Pokémon had expanded. The team were encouraged to bundle the Poker Walker with Heart Gold and Soul Silver after the success of the wireless adapter that was bundled with Fire Red and Leaf Green. Interestingly, development of the wireless adapter for Pokémon Fire Red and Leaf Green gave the hardware team valuable experience with wireless technology, which they would later use while designing the Nintendo DS. The proposal document for the Poker Walker was about three times thicker than the document for the Pocket Pikachu. Though the Poker Walker dropped many features from the original, some additions exceeded expectations. Originally, the plan was to have a handful of Pokémon that could be sent to the Poker Walker, but this was expanded to include every Pokémon. The Poker Walker was also influenced by the Pokémon anime. The concept of Pokéballs shrinking in size was pioneered by the anime, and the look of the Poker Walker was deliberately meant to match the size of the shrunken Pokéballs. The size was also altered to improve its ability to withstand water, inspired by Ishihara's dog walking story. The Poker Walker ended up being more impressive than the pedometer it was based on. In a study conducted by Iowa State University, several different pedometers were tested for accuracy when used by someone walking on a treadmill. In comparison to top brands like DigiWalker and Senseware, the Poker Walker was actually found to have a significantly lower margin of error, making it one of the most accurate pedometers on the market at the time. The researchers who conducted the study also praised the Poker Walker for helping to make exercise more appealing to children by incorporating video game functionality. Another interesting detail is that the music used in the Poker Walker menus is actually a new rendition of the music heard when using the Game Boy printer with Pokémon Yellow, Gold, Silver, or Crystal. The GB Sounds feature let players listen to the original Game Boy music as they played. However, several of these tracks had to be painstakingly recreated, as they didn't exist in the MIDI format, and tracks such as Unknown Radio posed even more problems, as they were programmed to work directly with the Game Boy's chiptune audio hardware. Additionally, some new tracks had to be composed for some areas. Cerulean City didn't have its own unique music in Generation 2, and other areas like Route 47 and the Global Terminal didn't exist in the original games. Composer Go Ichinose had difficulty making new battle themes for Ho-Oh and Lugia, which both used the standard wild battle theme in Gold and Silver. He asked the original game's composer, Junichi Masuda, to give him an idea of what Lugia's theme should be. Masuda played him just three or four notes, but these were enough to convey the feeling of the theme, and Ichinose finished the song with ease. 
Ho-Wo proved to be more difficult, as he envisioned it being a peaceful creature. The difficulty came when trying to convey the serenity in a climactic battle theme. Ichinose submitted many proposals, but each one was rejected as it didn't reflect the power and glory of ho -Oh. The deadline was met, although Ichinose had to tone down the track's peacefulness. Heart Gold and Soul Silver were also influenced by the release of the Nintendo DSi, which launched a few months before the games. Many more Pokémon were added to the games to accommodate players that were unable to trade from the Game Boy Advance games due to the DSi's lack of a Game Boy Advance cartridge slot. The games also have several regional differences. The Sages featured in the games had their designs changed, but only for the Korean versions. The Sprites had their prayer beads removed and a red robe added on one of their shoulders, and they were renamed to Asetix. These changes were most likely done for religious reasons. There's also a glitch that's exclusive to the Japanese versions. In the Slowpoke Well, there's a place where the player needs to use strength in order to push a boulder out of the way. In the Japanese version, the player is actually able to push this boulder into the water. Even when surfing, the player can continue to freely push this boulder around in the water, although it ultimately doesn't do anything. In the Japanese games, the Game Corner used the slot machine minigame that has been a staple of the series since Red and Blue. However, the international versions of Heart Gold and Soul Silver used another minigame known as Voltorb Flip. This was due to a change in European legislation that automatically earned any game with gambling a 12 plus rating. The data for the Game Corner area can still be found in the international version, alongside an unused map icon for the Poker Gear. This icon resembles Crystal, the female playable character from Pokemon Crystal, perhaps suggesting her design was planned to appear in the remakes instead of Lyra. The game has other potentially cut content. The internal list of attacks that Pokémon can learn officially includes 467 moves. If the player hacks the game to give a Pokémon a move numbered 468, 469, or 470, the moves will actually work as special attacks with a base power and accuracy of 110 pp. Using moves numbered above 470 will simply cause the game to crash, which could indicate at least three more moves were planned at some point in development. Many files relating to the underground from Diamond, Pearl, and Platinum can be found in the data for Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver, suggesting this feature was meant to make a comeback at one point. There are two notable unused items also hidden in the game's files. The first is a photo album that would have held any photos the player took during the game. In the final release, photos are simply stored in the player's PC, making the album redundant. The second unused item is known as the Lock Capsule, which according to its in-game description, can only be opened with a special key. When hacked into the game, the item does nothing. Its original purpose was to be transferred to Pokémon Black and White, where the player could take it to Mr. Lock in Castelia City in order to receive a TM for the move Snarl. If the player obtains the legendary Pokémon Arceus through a special giveaway in Heart Gold and Soul Silver, they can access the Sinyo Ruins area, where they receive their choice of a Level 1 Palkia, Dialga, or Giratina. It's actually possible to visit the Sinyo Ruins a second time, but only if the player has a second Arceus obtained from an in-game event in Pokémon Diamond and Pearl that went unused, meaning that this second trip is normally impossible. Should the player hack the game to make the event happen, the hiker who greets them will have new dialogue welcoming them back, and the player will be able to obtain one of the two Pokémon that they didn't choose the first time round. Heart Gold and Soul Silver were also programmed with built-in anti-piracy protection. If the game detects that it's being played on an emulator, it will simply freeze at the start of a Pokémon battle and leave the player's Pokéballs spinning. Have you ever wanted to get into the gaming, film, or music industry but don't know how? You can change that with Full Sail University. Full Sail's courses focus on practical, hands-on experience with the software and tools that are actually used in development and production jobs. Full Sail also offer accelerated degree programs that let you finish faster and get into the industry sooner. Not only will Full Sail give you knowledge and experience, but attending will help build up industry connections with other graduates in the field you want to pursue. If you have a busy life or need more flexibility, you can also study online in your own time instead of studying at their campus. Full Sail University is held in high regard, and their specialities in entertainment, media, technology, and the arts are respected in the industry. Full Sail have produced graduates that have gone on to work on the Call of Duty series, help engineer Kendrick Lamar's last record, and even animate for Steven Spielberg's latest movies. 
If game development or a job in entertainment is something you want to pursue, visit fullsail.edu forward slash gykg to learn more about Full Sail and their range of courses. Did you also know that Agron was partly inspired by a North Korean film that was directed by director Kim Jong-il? For more Pokémon facts, check out our video on Ruby and Sapphire. Or if you want something different, check out our last video on Smash Brothers.